attention. Please be advised that by your entry upon these premises, you are consenting to being photographed. You are consenting to being photographed. This means they're going to take photos of your ugly faces, right? And having your ugly likeness used in a filthy motion picture. And for other purposes. And for other purposes. And for other purposes. Thank you. And at the bottom it says thank you. And you can tell them to fuck off. But okay, well we got we got to talk on for oh, well uh, we got to talk about this early hardcore thing because Penelope Spheris has just reissued. Do you know about this? Yeah, of course. She reissued uh, the Decline of the Western Civilization series. Yeah, uh, three movies, and uh, I think you know the first one was the best, right? But of course, it, but yeah. everyone thinks the first. Everyone. Does. <laughs> and uh, this is where you got the start of your acting career. My acting career, <laughs> the start and but the it's end. pretty oh, well, amazing. Not really in the end, actually. Because yeah. when did that movie come out? 1980. Oh, I, I, I think so. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're guessing 1980. Na- We're talking about this 40 it years okay, later. But here's here's an, here's an interesting thing. I was in the Blues Brothers movie and Rock and Roll High School. You were in the Blues wow. Brothers. Movie. So like fucking a. Those are three pretty awesome movies, yeah, right? Really and I was sure. in all three of those you movies. You were in Rock and Roll High School. I was. I, now, wow. and I just in the, just in the crowd scene, like when oh, the Ramones still, were playing. No, you were there with the Ramones. I was with the, with the Ramones. Holy shit. Fucking a. Yeah. You know that. Uh, and and the original Blues Brothers movie. Wow! So all that I shit happened at the same time. It was just you know what? It was oh God, my, it was so funny because like a lot of a lot of my uh, friends who were like punks and stuff in Hollywood, um, nobody had jobs, and uh, everybody made money either by giving blood or by being an extra in a movie somehow because of course it's Hollywood. So uh, you know, there's a lot of calls for extras all the time. It was was one that good money? Or was oh it no no no! It was no, mo- <laughs> no money. What about giving blood? Because no, I, I really blood. need to make some money. From- <laughs> yeah, no. We, do they we, still do we that? We need to write a couple more hit songs. That might okay. just. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that, that's harder than giving blood. It's a fucking movie representing fucking L.A. Dance. You want people in Philadelphia to see a bunch of dead beats? I'm just thinking when you 18 year old you went to the premiere of the movie. And so it had a premiere, and I do believe that I was in town for that. Um, I came down. I believe I did see that. I mean, well, well, what did you think watching yourself? And uh, you, you know what? Like, I, I've Holy always, shit. Just, I've always completely despised watching myself or seeing any 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 kind of image of myself. But I loved the movie. I, I, I absolutely loved the Germs X Fear. Yes. Um, it, it, Catholic Discipline, which is one of those bands that actually were kind of maybe the maybe one of the B list bands at, at the time. Maybe right. some people might say. I think that that I, I see that movie now, and 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 I and I really love Catholic Discipline in that, and they're artsy fartsy, and which is also one of the things that I loved about that original. Uh, Hollywood scene is that it was a bunch of art school rejects. Right. You well, know, they, they weren't jarheads, uh, you know, um, jocks who shaved their head the next day and became punk rockers. They were art school rejects. Right? We got arrested the other night at Blackie's for playing punk rock music. They put us in jail, and this song's called Revenge. It's not my imagination! I gotta go to my back! But do you? I have no idea. Do you remember like sort of how that movie came about? Who she was? Was she a person on the scene, or how did this movie come about? Because it's a great movie. It really. Did you, yeah, look, I mean, like, you know, I was like 18 years old, you know, and I was just like having a good time. Yeah, and you I was seem in like you having a good time. And and it's like, and then it was like somebody wanted to do a movie, and it was like, okay, whatever, you know. I I, I had no idea. It's just being in the right place at the right time, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I, I will say this: that that you know, um, again, um, that was like a, it was that was a bit of a transitional period. There was a Hollywood scene, and then there was the emerging South Bay scene, which was kind of like a, a bridge to what would later be the Orange County kind of scene, and uh, and so. It was a really transitional period, and, and out of all the bands, Black Flag was kind of like, uh, and then of course the Circle Jacks uh, got on there as well. But the Hollywood uh, the bands were, you know, represented really well. And then there was this band from the South Bay, Black Flag, and uh, I don't know. I, I think that Penelope had a really keen understanding of 
where things were going. None of us really, I, I know I didn't. All the bands that I loved were out of Hollywood. Uh, but I think she saw something that was emerging that was uh, full of a different kind of energy and that and then Black Flag was probably the band that represented that the best at the well, time. you guys were truly kids. Like, I mean, well, if you look at Well, some of us X, were. I mean, uh, you X, know, Greg X and, were and, and, Greg and, and like, Chuck weren't really young, but, you know, I was the youngest one at that point in, in that band. Um, it's interesting, I was the oldest guy in Red Cross when I was in Red Cross. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so wait, you moved to Vancouver real like in the eighties. Uh, it would have been about nineteen eighty. Yeah. Wow. So like we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but let's talk about it like now that we're on the air. So you you made the movie. You're touring with the band. Uh, Black Flag uh, toured like basically the West Coast. Yeah. And so we played you know whatever San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, just the, the main cities, I guess. And we did that uh, a couple times. Yeah. And uh, and then at that point, I really fell in love with Vancouver. Uh, the people, the scene, the the bands, DOA, Subhumans, Point and Sticks, the Modern Nats, all those bands. I just I just love the, the young Canadians. I thought that the, it really that scene represented something that was a little bit like the early Hollywood scene, in that really? it was in, in that there was a lot of uh, diversification. Right. It wasn't this black and white like hardcore like. You know, thing that was emerging, uh, that was beginning to emerge in, out of LA. Right. LA was getting violent too, wasn't it? Yeah. And the uh, uh, whole vicious circle yeah. gang, and it really yeah. seemed about hurting people. Well, <laughs> TSOL were awesome, and and they, and they actually. And I, I mean, got, they're following. And, and yeah, no, the, the 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 following was just you know a bunch of idiots. Really, a lot of lot lot, lot of them. I mean, let's face it, they're just like. You know, one day they had long hair and they were jocks, and the next day, and and the, one day they had long hair and jocks and were beating up on punkers. Right. And the next day they cut right. their hair and were like, you know, battling it out, battling right. out on the on the dance floor. Is it, it was it was a bizarre transitional period. Yeah. So when you were in Black Flag, were you guys actually experienced some of that violence and the cops and all that? Um, getting a lot of the cop down? thing. That, that I mean, the cops. You know, we certainly experienced some of that, but a lot of the really, really bad stuff came after came after out. I left. Yeah. But in the movie, you guys are even talking about like I think it's. It's not my imagination. <laughs> I got a gun to my back. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. Concerts, it's like my friends get beat up on my friends, you know. Then it's like fucked, you know. It's just cause like they're not beating up the right people. They're not beating up the fucking posers. They're beating up just like just my friends. What about Darby Crash? Did you hang with him? A little bit, yeah. I mean, uh, definitely uh, huge Germs fans, and and I knew Darby. We we hung out a little bit, but when I when I was going to the the early uh, Hollywood shows like at the mask and the whiskey and, and places like that um, I was a really really ridiculously introverted person I would go to the shows kind of stand around never talk to anybody and then go home I would ride my bicycle to Hollywood from Hermosa Beach was like which would be like from here to Holy White shit. Rock or something yeah. like that, you know. Oh, well, that's why you moved from LA. Uh, you know, have a car. Yeah, and so <laughs> and, and uh, I got a germ spray. Yeah. Oh, you got a germ spray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I, but I don't remember <laughs> who gave it to me. I, I remember it was outside of the Hong Kong cafe, and it was either Don or Darby or uh, Melissa. Don is still but, around. But Every time Don, I go to LA, he's still Don's still around. around. Yeah. yeah, actually, Don, I, I'm on a recording with Don. We just did recently. Uh, um, uh, but this band called Watchtower, 
he finally. plays. He plays. Yeah, finally. After all these, <laughs> he plays in a. I think in a kind of a cover band with a friend of ours in L.A. Oh which, yeah, which or band he was. Is that? I don't know the name, but he plays with our friend Dave Lachance, I believe. Who's in a, a band. French Canadian? He's oh. a French Canadian guy down there in L.A. And I just saw Don play with Ariel Pink. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Black Flag. What you're talking about? Black Flag became. They were like the poster band for that 80s hardcore scene, uh, like almost to me they were. They, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Like so suburban I, hardcore that, you know, sort of that early punk scene yeah. went into like hardcore and Black Flag became, you know, it started with sort of you and Keith Morris before you, but yeah, absolutely, with Henry yeah. Rollins who really like took over the band after yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. they were the band. Yeah, and you know, there were there were other bands, and one of the bands I think of a lot is, is a band called Middle Class. And they were a band that, you know, certainly people who understand the whole hardcore music thing will point to middle class as, as one of the very, very early, very right. inspirational bands. First single. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. But, but Black Flag, I think, just took it a few notches more. Uh, there was something really, uh, you know, I mean, like, I, I played a very small part in that, but, but it, um, it is very special and I, I think unique. I, I really do think they were unique. Initial exposure to punk rock was from the Hollywood scene, and the Hollywood scene was very much rooted in like glam rock, and 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 like just the germs were like yeah of glam course kid I mean, wannabes uh, uh, my, my, of course you know David Bowie uh, you know influenced everybody out of that scene you know so now so, who's that who's David Bowie <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up oh my gosh I have a podcast. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, very limited musical. Knowledge. So wait, let me just go on yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so, so no, that was very natural. For yeah. a lot of stuff that came out of that scene, I can't speak for any other scene, but a lot of stuff that came out of that scene was very much rooted in that kind of uh, the glam uh, and, and 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 some of that rock and roll and the Alice Cooper stuff and everything like that and the Stooges, of course. Did you see those bands? Were you going to see shows in the in the no? The you know what? No, you LA? know no, you know what? Because uh, the first shows that I started seeing were like, I, 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 I didn't see Alice Cooper, I saw Kiss. Kiss was my introduction to that, which is kind of like second generation. So was like, Kiss your first show that your mom um, took you to? What that is my your mom, first show? That my mom, <laughs> I, I, you know what, I really, I, I really don't know what my first show was. I, I have no idea, I don't know what I had for breakfast, but Kiss was probably one of the first bands that made me go, oh my God. So, for me, yeah. Kiss is all about, I don't, pay attention to the theatrics it's all about mu the music right? oh yeah of course <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course uh, yeah. Beth yes yeah you know, uh, well yes I you just, know. did they ever get one good review of Kiss <laughs> I probably not I, I, probably not I read one review where it described their music as the sound of panzers uh, driving into your village yeah and then I'm like really that's not a compliment you know because the sound of panzers of Nazis driving into your yeah, village is yeah. like pretty much a bad thing. Listen, I'm a, I'm a huge, 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 huge early Kiss fan. I used to go to high school on a Thursday afternoon dressed as Ace Frehley, riding oh. a unicycle. So wait, you know, <laughs> I mean, with with like like ten inch heels, going to high school in, in, in like silver lame. <laughs> wow, so and I'm going to high school in the seventies, that yeah. must have been bitching. I hated it. Oh. Where? Okay, hang on. I hated it because I went to a school that was kind of preppy. I went to a school in Manhattan Beach, which later on, a lot of people, like like a lot of uh, the Southern California, uh, South Bay punk uh, guys came from the same school. But at the time, I was probably one of the only ones. And Anyway, there's a lot of really cool uh, stuff that happened in that school. But but essentially, it was a, a jock school. Oh, dear. And, and it, so it was awful. It was awful. But there were there was a fringe. There's always a fringe so element. This right? is mid-70s. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so, yeah, mid-70s. And yeah. how, okay, so you went, you were going to Kiss shows, maybe some other rock shows. Yeah. How, did, how did you discover what, whatever was happening in Hollywood, the punk scene? Well, like, actually, I had this friend, and uh, um, and her name's Debbie Rogers, and uh, 
and she used to go to all the the clubs in Hollywood and she was the one who said Ron you got to go check out this place called the mask right in in, in Hollywood and uh, we were going to to like the rocker shows or like at the Starwood and and, and, and the Roxy and stuff like that and, and then she just caught wind of this this thing that was happening and she was the one that uh, kind of like uh, she gave me my first uh, record which was uh, uh, Sex Pistols God Save the Queen so was this like uh, a high school buddy you guys were yeah we were stoners. high school buddies yeah 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 So wait, you're an American who came to Canada and was illegal here. That's right. Uh, oh, initially, wow. I'm 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 uh, I'm because me and all my friends we went down to L.A. I, I'm legitimate now, but yeah. at the time I was totally illegal. Yeah. And you're oh. born in Puerto Rico, right? But yes. that's part of America. It, it, kind of, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? It's a yes. protectorate. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. I mean. Okay, wait. Same thing. Kind yeah, of. so, I mean, I thought it, it was almost a state, wasn't it? I, 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 probably, I don't know. I have no idea. But You're I mean... history. Well, no, so Puerto Rico, uh, you know, it's not like a different country. No, uh, it's not. It's basically... Although it if, should be. It, it definitely has its own culture and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Which, but, but I mean, yeah. uh, you should be able to just move from Puerto Rico to yes. New York if you want. Absolutely, and it yes. And which, which is what all Puerto Ricans do. I've noticed <laughs> Puerto Ricans go to New York. It's yeah. like it's like it's like when they leave Puerto Rico, where do they go? They go to. Do New York. you remember Puerto Rico? I mean, were uh, you a there bit, for a little bit? A while? Yeah, 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 a little bit. And then I moved to New York as a, as a child. <laughs> you did go to New York. York. So, so before LA, before LA, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So as a as a child, I, I have no strong memories of of New York. I was in the Bronx and stuff like that, but. I like to live in America. Yeah. <laughs> Puerto yeah. Rico, my heart's That's devotion. devotion. <laughs> I wish it'd sink it's into the ocean. ocean. <laughs> Something like that, right? Yeah. So that is a hell of a soundtrack, actually. Are you kidding? Oh my I gosh! Know. Yes, Officer Krupke. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. And I, and I love musicals. And I, I've always loved musicals. And, and that's one of my favorites for sure. Uh, is Piggy gonna do a musical? You know what? <laughs> oh my gosh, Mark! Yes, and we'll get you to direct it, <laughs> yeah, or produce cool. it. Can I, I, I want to be uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, yes. Doctor Frankfurter. Absolutely. Absolutely, I just want to wear fishnets. What about Black Fag? Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so um, Black Fag. Yeah. Are absolutely fabulous. They're a Black Flag tribute band, cover band, whatever you want to call them. And they're very, very campy. They they take all the lyrics, and they very much put a homoerotic spin on the whole thing. So and it's kind of like the Rollins band. It's yeah, it's it's like the Rollins Danzig thing. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. No, sorry, Henry. I, it, but it's really fun. It's fabulous. They're, they're they're and they're really good. And they and they do it very very well. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be playing with them in two shows in California. Piggy's playing with them. Piggy yeah. is playing with Black Fag. In uh, in Long Beach and and in Ventura, Black Fag has had an open invitation to any ex Black Flag member to join them on stage anytime you like, uh-huh. uh, and sing a song or play a song with them. the The catch is you have to do it in drag. So, I mean, it's a ridiculous idea, you know. And nobody in their right mind would do that. But so, but you know, you will. But I will. But so so the and I've wanted to do it for years. Awesome. Yeah. On this That's tour, amazing. on this tour, the Long Beach show, Piggy and Black Fag, and Richard Duye and Richard. Holy shit! So Richard's gonna be there. Yeah, he'll get into fishnets. Let's go. I'm gonna build a one-story town.
it's so for this tour, do you have a album or something to sell while you go down there? We I got, mean, we got do you have a, a s- limited edition piggy? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, you're good. You've done this before. <laughs> You've done this before. So yes, yeah. So what we did was, uh, we're we're poor is, is is shit. Like we we ain't got no money, honey. Oh. So you know, we recently scraped up enough to record three songs, and we thought, well, what are we gonna do with three songs? Uh, let's put it on vinyl, but we don't have the money for vinyl, and we don't have the time for vinyl. So we made a compilation of uh, three new songs, uh, four or five songs from our uh, original uh, recording that was recorded by uh, Jack and Dino and Cecil English. Oh no way! Yeah, and uh, and so it's got uh, some songs off of that, and then it's got a live interview, That's cool. and and then it's got a a, a, a homebrew demo that I recorded and and, and sang on. And so it's a compilation. It's got like nine or ten or eleven songs so, on it. So and this is just available on the it's tour. It's only going to be available on the tour. Of course, we'll have uh, whatever ones we have left over. We'll whatever, but hopefully we won't have any left over. But now that this this cover has uh, Dave uh, Dave Dave uh, posing on it, being all tied up by Ange Trash, and Ange is standing on him. Um, so that's it, like girl power. It's a very girl power. Very, she's, it's a very dominant thing, and you know, and we're gonna make some people angry about that and stuff. But uh, whatever, it was her idea, and we said whatever, go with it. Yeah. So, uh, Ron, yeah, you're going on tour, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. My band Piggy is uh, doing a little West Coast tour, uh, starting at the end of uh, July. Right, because uh, you guys just did a video. Yeah, we did a, a video uh, for a song called DK. Don't ask me what that uh, means. What does that mean? I have no idea what that means. It's, it's, uh, Ange Trash uh, wrote the lyrics, and I think it has something to do about love gone bad or something like that. So, you, you know, it's one of those things. Oh, I see it. I, I'm DK, a love gone bad. Love gone bad. DK, love gone bad. Something like that. Yeah, I think so. But you write all the songs. No, well, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I write most of the music and, and, and some of the lyrics, but, but um, you know, everybody chips in, and, and you know, I, I figure the singer should write uh, the lion's share of their lyrics, so that's what Ange does, and she... she uh, so, yeah. but the songs start out, you, you write them... And then you pass on the music to Ange. Yeah, writing's a, a that's a strong word. It, and it, then, <laughs> it's you know it's. Just, and then you give them working titles. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I just I just like I just pick up my guitar and I play something. Buddha stomp. Yeah, Buddha stomp. What's that about? Uh, that I, I again I have no idea what the lyrics are about. I don't. Uh, I, I you know what I, I don't vet my 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 singer's lyrics although I probably should. Um, is it about uh, but, like but kicking Buddha's head in? It's it's totally about kicking Buddha's head in. No, <laughs> what it is is that of course, um, uh, uh, you know, when I first came to Vancouver, the, the Smiling Buddha was uh, uh, the club that I hang out uh, that I hung out at the most, and one of my favorite bands that I ever uh, saw there, and I saw them several times was uh, Bludgeon first, Pigs. I was in Bludgeon Pigs. No way. Yeah. I managed the Bludgeon yeah, Pigs. Yeah, I, I played drums. During the reunion in oh, really? the 90s. Oh, my gosh, yes. Uh, an alcoholic Al? Yeah, for sure. I, of course, yeah. He was a hard guy to manage. Yes, I. well, of course, yes. It was, it was very brief. It was like they thought, oh, Mark Manhattan, you've got your shit together. Oh, you got your yeah. shit together. In You're comparison to Alcohol song, Al. Yeah, but... No, this was before I had a hit song. Okay, there you go. Just a, just a youngster. Yeah, just a, just yeah. a toddler. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so you were in the Bludgeon Pigs. I was in the Bludgeon, Bludgeon Pigs, yeah. But but getting back to Buddha Stomp, uh, just quickly, uh, one of my favorite bands I ever saw there, and many times was Personality Crisis. And so yes. I was picked up. I picked up my guitar one day, and I just started playing the song, and it just reminded me of Personality Crisis and the Smiling Buddha. It had that kind of energy, I thought, and so I just named it Buddha Stomp, and uh, and and then and then and then. Uh, and uh, I have, no, but I have no, but I didn't write the lyrics, so I have no idea what the lyrics are. Oh.
So Ken Lester and Dave Spanner uh, were like the managers of DOA and Subhumans back right. when 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 uh, when Black Flag uh, came up here. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna sound like so stupid and naive when I when I when say I, this to people. But okay, so I was in this band called Black Flag. Seriously, I had no idea that it had anything to do with anarchy. Oh really? I had you no idea. Realize that? No. Was and, and you wasn't know why? There a bug? Wait a minute. And you know something? why I didn't realize it? Because it was never brought up at all in any of our rehearsals, meetings, band. I mean, I think that. Look, I don't want to steal anybody's fire. And if Greg Ginn or Chuck had some kind of anarchistic, you know, uh, vision uh, for the band, then God bless them. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I was in a band singing and there were girls and it was fun <laughs> and there was beer and it was like and we were on tour and I came to Canada and Ken Lester and Dave Spanner who are like these anarchists yeah. go right. oh man it's so awesome to have you guys up here like a true anarchist band and I, I, I look over to like like Chuck and I go, what the fuck is he talking about? Wow. So you weren't like, <laughs> you guys weren't like crass and uh, politically. Seriously, <laughs> seriously not. Those guys are I, very, I, very, very politically inclined. Si- guys. Um, you know what? I, I don't know. I'm not going to speak for them. In my time with them, we are absolutely not. It was, it was personal politics. It was personal. Everything was very personal. Yeah. We didn't talk about it. We didn't have no agendas. There was no manifest. There was n- nothing. It was. It was. It was. You know. It, there was none of that. But that's. It's often that. It's and that that's going to blow people some people's is, cool. Yeah. Uh, you know because you know they maybe they're thinking that this was some kind of like vision, and and if there was a vision, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> I did not get the memo until I met Ken Lester. How much do you make per month when you when you uh, as, as a performer? Uh, pretty much nothing. Negative. Negative, yeah. Actually, you I don't make like well, like Greg said, we don't make very much of gigs, and most of it goes back into like the promotion and uh, you know expenses. Usually, maybe I could get a meal out of it here and there, and otherwise, I just have to find rich girls and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't rent a house because I owe the gas company pe- money, I owe the electrical company money, I owe the telephone company money, so I can't rent a house under my name, so I might as well live in a fucking closet for $16 a month. Have, have you seen my fucking royalty statements lately? How am I supposed to live off have that? You seen, uh, <laughs> ha- have you seen uh, Dimwit's royalty statement? Oh, no, I haven't. Is it terrible? Okay, yeah. Good. B- Bob Montgomery yeah. just posted a, a copy of it, the, the most recent check from SoCan yeah. uh, to, to Dimwit. And now, Dimwit was in DOA, he was in uh, the Los Populeros, he was in Point of Sticks, and he was in the Four Horsemen. Mm-hmm. Now, the Four Horsemen... They had an American uh, hit. Which probably sold a, a fair amount of, of, of records. Rockin' is my business. And business is good. Yeah. And, and it's a great record. And do you know that I, that I uh, I uh, tried out for that band? Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. Uh, Glenn Denzig actually recommended me for that band. Oh nice. And, and, and I and I met up with uh, uh, one of the members, and uh, we had a meeting, and it didn't do well because I was in, at the time I was in Crash Band Crunch Pop, and all my songs were like la 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 la, very poppy and very. That's not how I very, remember very, Crash Band Crunch Pop. You guys were fucking stooges well you know live we were but but the recordings were quite poppy we were oh, really? Uh, yeah really I'll have to uh, share some of that with you maybe but anyway so 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 I guess after Dimwit died they had sent the, his initial royalty check to Bob Montgomery and, and or to the estate yeah and, uh, and and that initial check which would have covered probably some four horsemen stuff maybe some other deal way stuff or whatever Came to three hundred dollars. Um, that was the initial check back in the day. Uh, back in the day. Okay, it's not a lot. No, it's not a lot. So all these years pass, and this is a recent Facebook post by Bob Montgomery's brother. Yeah. And uh, so, so um, all these years have passed, and Bob said, I guess contact so so can and said, hey, you know, haven't heard from you guys in a long time. I'm wondering if there's any other royalties, any checks coming, and are you gonna guess what the check was for? And now this is for about twenty years. Since the previous check, 
20 years later, the yeah. second check yeah. from So Can. Listen, all of you songwriters out there bitching and moaning about Spotify and all that other stuff. Mark. The, Mark. Mark. <laughs> the second check was for 27 cents. Oh, Jesus. Wow. So here you are in the Four Horsemen and DOA and the and and the Subhumans and the Pointed Sticks and all these bands have made like amazing music all through the years. Twenty seven cents. Hmm. So all of you guys who are like worried about like oh I'm not making my royalties, judging by the palace that we're currently in, <laughs> I, I'd imagine that you are probably bringing <laughs> cash in those checks uh, on a regular my, basis. My distributor won't even email me back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Maybe Chuck and well, actually, I, I actually I bet Chuck and Greg were angry with me because they gave me that name that that came later. They they saddled me with that name Chavo Pederast, which of course uh, <laughs> that's not a good name. No, it's not a it's not a good name. It's like it's wonderful. Okay, yes. Oh, that pedophile guy. Yes. Uh, no, um, and that was never my name. But it, oh, here's a funny story. Uh, I've said this before, but but I was in Vancouver. And, uh, and and uh, a year or so after I quit the band, and I was at a record store on Granville Street, and I saw this this new Black Flag record, and I pick it up and I go, oh great, they they finally get, got this uh, new record out, and I turn it around and they got the singer, and I go, oh Chavo Pedras, I wonder who that is. Anyway, so I bought, ah. so so I so so I bought the record, and I took it home and put it on my record player, and I went. Damn, this guy sounds a lot like me. <laughs> and of course it was me. Probably the one regret that I have is getting caught up in the battle between Black Flag and Flag, uh, which was like the members of the other, the, like Keith and, and Chuck and, right. and, and, and Bill was there and actual, stuff like that. There was that. an actual legal battle. Too. Well, there was a legal battle. I, I wasn't involved in the legal uh -huh. battle, um, but, you know, it's just... it. There was there were two camps, and it was yeah. us versus them. And, and that was... Highly reg regrettable because uh, I really loved what those guys were doing. I thought it was fantastic. I thought they did it well. Yeah. Um, and I and I said to Greg at the onset, I go, dude, just let them do their thing, man. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and and you know what? We'll do our thing. They'll do their thing and whatever. And, but he turned that into a bit of a battle, and uh, and it got ugly. And I unfortunately was caught up in that. And it's camp a little bit. That that was. That was probably the only thing that is really regrettable. And how how did it did it end the battle? Was it a legal end? Like I remember hearing yeah, about it. I don't yeah, you know, know what? what I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know how that ended. And and I I believe that there's probably some gag orders on on some of the members or mm -hmm. all of the members, because uh, even privately I haven't heard of, of how that ended. So you were saying earlier that you're going to be stepping up to vocals in Piggy a little bit more than you know. Yeah, you're sing I, the occasional song now. Yeah, uh, well, the because you got a broad doing it right now. Uh, we have Ange Trash, who is one hell of a broad doing it, and, and she she does it with gusto. When I call her a broad, yes. Uh, are, we, are, are we going to offend me? Pe are we going to offend people? Are Ange people Trash get all would pretty much beat that? me up, wouldn't she? Ange <laughs> Trash could totally kick your ass. I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> she would devastate you. <laughs> <laughs> so I best stop calling her abroad. But, but <laughs> you might want to stop calling her abroad. Okay, yeah. I'll start choosing my words wisely.